Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to talk about Deep Learning 12 and specifically the installation of eight NVIDIA Tesla P100 SXM2 GPUs into our server. Deep Learning 12 is where we started with a box, we built it up, and now we're training with something that's effectively an NVIDIA DGX 1.5. The Deep Learning 12 is based on a Gigabyte G481 S80 for you server. It uses Skylake SP CPUs, which is an upgrade over the DGX1's Intel Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. The system is using eight NVIDIA Tesla P100 SXM2 GPUs, which means we get to use NVLink as well. The SXM2 GPUs are extremely difficult to install, and so we made a little video on how we did this. SXM2 pins are extremely fragile, which means that we had to remove the protective covers from both the GPUs and the PCB that we're gonna mount the GPUs on. Part of this process involves aligning the SXM2 GPU with the slots. It's actually keyed, so it's not that hard to do, but we were told that most factory installations use a custom-made jig to align the GPUs properly. There are actually two guide pins, so the seating is not that hard, but it's also something where it was relatively difficult to do. We're using a just kind of standard screwdriver here. While we were doing this, someone from a large hyperscale organization came in and said, you're not installing those GPUs with that screwdriver, are you? And the answer was that we were, and then we realized that it was a bad idea. Something that we were told was that if you, you can do the first part of the GPU installation, so you can actually put the GPUs onto the PCB, and that's relatively easy, relatively safe. The installation of the heat sinks, though, is a completely different story, and one where we ended up with a $350 screwdriver to be able to complete it successfully. So about that screwdriver, uh, first off, we want to talk about the SXM2 installation. It absolutely sucks. Do not do this. Just buy a pre-assembled unit. Don't go through the trouble. But if you do want to do it, get a good torque driver. Uh, you need specs, and they're generally pretty low in terms of the actual torque force that you need to put on the screws. You should check with your manufacturer, but we've heard many stories of even a 15% over-tighten uh, damaging the, G the GPUs. So, you know, you don't really want to break a $5,000 or $8,000, $10,000 GPU because you used a cheap screwdriver like we were doing at the beginning. We had to find a driver that could torque the screws accurately enough, so we ended up with a Checkline TSD50. We got off of Amazon, and it ended up working pretty well. Since damaging GPUs is a real risk, you need to make sure that the accuracy and the calibration of the screwdriver that you use is spot on. A few days later, we went back with our $350 screwdriver to finish the installation. One thing that we also learned was the fact that instead of screwing the outer screws first, you actually should screw the four inner screws first in a diagonal pattern and then screw in the outer screws. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. It actually ended up working out for us. All of our GPUs worked, but we suggest doing it the right way instead of how we did it when we were learning. The next step was to install the heatsink. So this is going to follow a pretty similar pattern. What you need to do is you need to get the heat sinks seated properly and aligned so that all of the necessary components are going to make contact with the heat sink and thermal transfer pads. Then you do a similar crisscross pattern. You can see that we actually have a label that tells us go one, two, three, four, and tells us which ones to screw in. Also note that our $350 screwdriver here made contact with some of the fins on, this, on the heatsink. That ended up not making a lot of a diff difference in terms of cooling performance, but it is something to just keep in mind that even with our fancy $350 screwdriver, it didn't necessarily make a smooth installation. You can see that even though this was our fifth heatsink install, we were still doing it rather timidly. These things are really scary to install because if you over torque, you break the GPUs. Doing this in the data center meant that it was too loud to record the beeps, but you can see if we slow this down that the screwdriver is actually telling us to stop at very specific intervals. So if all goes well, 
you managed to not break the GPU. This all works. In our case, all eight GPUs came up the first time, which was a little bit surprising. We definitely took this a little bit slower than we would with a CPU or a normal PCIe GPU installation, simply due to the complexity. Again, Overall, this is extremely difficult to do. We strongly recommend that you have a professional or manufacturer do it instead of trying to do it yourself. But it is possible to build your own DGX1. And the next part of the series, we're going to show you what Deep Learning 12 can do. Thanks for watching. Check out the main site. Check out more from STH on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel.